Hey everybody, welcome back. It is June the 14th. Um, Liz and Kayla have gone home. So I'm sure you'll hear about that little bit of travel, I guess, what I have to go through, leaving my family and then getting completely thrown off. But before we get into all of that, Liz has something to say. First, I'm going to preface if I sound like I'm half asleep. I am. <laughs> and I did just take a nap. And it's also 8.30 p.m. What? I texted, I don't know what I texted her. It was like, I just, I think I asked her about the travel and she was like, oh, you're still awake. I was like, it's lunchtime. I have been awake. You should be asleep. It was 1030 my time. And for some reason I thought it was morning. Like I have been so confused. I've been up since 4 a.m. also. Did I already say it's 830? I'm going to get so lost. I can't follow my own thoughts right now. So but but actually... The thing that is the funniest part about it is last year, because last year was the first time I went home and I came back. And first of all, like, obviously I was like thrown off. I didn't sleep on like the whole long flight as you did. Um, But then I got to Chicago and like all of my flight was like delayed and canceled. And I was originally supposed to go to Roanoke, but they diverted me to Greensboro, which was good because Ralph and Loretta picked me up or whatever. But I was so sleep deprived. And the next day we had to have a team meeting and I was just, I was Georgia, but my soul and my consciousness was just not in my body. And people were actually like, not getting mad, but people were like, scared. scared. Like, weird. I was like, I haven't slept in like 32 hours and I just left my family. I'm not going to see them for months. And this was at the time where I had my chocolate Labrador who was knocking on death's door. And I knew that was the last time I was going to see him too. So I was just like in shovels. But anyways, I'm just saying. This is a lot to get into before the first ad reads. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't all, really I'm saying, all I'm saying now is that when I land in the States and I'm not in the best mood and I'm exhausted, you now know how it feels. A little bit. You, you've been saying this all the time. Like I have no sympathy. Like I tell you all the time, like it's worthy of being... Whatever. Okay, let me read this freaking ad. Um, <laughs> Phillips Real Estate has another great listing coming up in Blacksburg. 1624 Honeysuckle is just minutes from campus in the village at Tom's Creek subdivision. It offers main level living with the primary bedroom on the main level, and the HOA takes care of the yard and exterior maintenance. This three bedroom townhouse is listed at $449,900. And Dave is hosting an open house on Thursday the 15th from 6 to 8 p.m. So stop by and see him. That's 1624 Honeysuckle in Blacksburg. And if you want your home advertised on our podcast, be sure to call Dave at 540-346-4552. And Phillips Real Estate can help you get your house sold. Go to that open house tomorrow. Um, Thank you for being patient with us. Um, Now back to what we were talking about. Um, Yes, okay, so the flight, the travel... Do we even say that we went to Australia? I mean, it's probably obvious. Are you I muted? Mean, I was, no, I oh. just said that you guys went home after spending time with me, like, in the first minute, so. Maybe they don't know you yet. Inter- no, no. I'm sorry. See, I don't, I can't think. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay, so let's start at the beginning. May 23rd, me and Kayla wake up. We're going to travel to Australia. Everything is too good to be true. We sleep for eight hours on the flight over um nothing like wrong happens with our luggage or our flights or anything and you pick us up so we started off really strong i'd say no comment yeah no you did i mean yeah. we picked them up and then we took them straight to maccas <laughs> yeah the first thing we did in australia was go to mcdonald's and that's because we had to try the what do you guys call it just bacon well our like yeah so like our mcmuffins and stuff like that like our bacon isn't strip bacon i think the anatomy of a pig and this might be gruesome but it's got like that circular bit of bacon and then it's like got a strip attached to it like you guys eat the strip like the fatty part we eat the stuff that kind of looks like ham you know what i'm saying australian u.s yeah so like on our like mcmuffins and all of that like that's what's on it and i just wanted them to try it and also it's just easy yeah well it was also just yummy uh, and I got a hash brown and I put that on top of it and they have good coffee so that's a sleigh and then we I think we got home and then for that first day I can't even I think I just took you guys around and just gave you more coffee and no, the first we... meal, let me tell you we went to the sushi place in the mall something about uh, Australia they're gonna have sushi everywhere you go I eat sushi I was there for like almost three weeks I think I had sushi like five times we would have it almost every second day. If it wasn't for a meal, it was yeah. like a snack. Yeah. And their sushi is different. 
I was gonna say we're big on like handheld roles like in Australia everything is kind of like if you like and you notice it too it's kind of quick in and out like food like there's not a whole oh, lot of space to sit. like it's always like, take, like not always take away but it's just like we on the move no time to waste like even people walking in the street like on the move but like our handheld our sushi's like got obviously the seaweed on the outside which is normal but it's like long and it's like handheld and it's just convenient to eat <laughs> that looks so unappetizing but so good a huge thing for us is chicken and sushi it's like teriyaki chicken crispy chicken spicy crispy chicken so that was all new for them in the first day yeah also, we went to a, a smoothie place, and I put a picture of it on my Instagram story, and Georgia started making fun of me immediately. It's called the- Bruce. It's just like, it's like if I went to America, and I'm like, tropical smoothie, and I'm like, holding the tropical smoothie cup, and like, putting on my story, like, it's just like stock standard, but it's, Bruce is good, I must admit, but it's just not really something I put in my story. I mean, maybe if you were in a fun, exciting foreign country, that's just yeah. how excited I was. True. Um, but then that night too took them home and mom had made pumpkin soup which is like the whole time i've been in america i'm like you guys like well you guys don't really eat pumpkin like that do you I'm like as much as you guys you guys eat pumpkin like nobody's business it's actually yeah. insane and like also just like i guess it's the same with sweet potato like we don't eat it like cinnamon and all that stuff like it's like you know what i'm saying so we made pumpkin soup and the girls are like eating it and it's not even going into their mouth they're like it was like 6 30 and i was talking no, about I have the time stamp. it was 7 25 okay anyways they were like sleeping at dinner like zombies yeah no very much so it was hitting me a little bit then um but then we woke up the next morning i didn't wake up till like 5 30 so i like slept in a little bit compared to you know others and then we went and got another coffee later and it just proved again that Australia does have the best coffee because I'm still thinking about racers to this day. Little cafe. Ooh, something else to be said about Australia. They have like a million cafes. Like there's so much less reliant on chains, it seems. Like instead of having like a Panera bread on every corner, there's just like a bunch of independent cafes, which I think yields the food to be much fresher and more enjoyable, in my opinion. No, I agree 100%. <laughs> like I'm no. never like... Even when I'm in America, I'm like, I'm not like, oh, it's Sunday. I'm going to go to Panera. Yum. Like, no, Panera is like last resort. Like, maybe we're going on a road trip or it's just convenient. Like, I feel like in Australia, we get excited to go to cafes. Like, oh, we're going out for coffee. Like, let's try a new cafe and stuff like that. Or like, you go to your old faithful and they know your order. Like, yeah, I'm going to just keep having random thoughts. But also something about Australia, like everything closed at like four or five, which in America, I feel like- well, cafes close at like two. Sorry, I know. Continue. I'm just so, when we were walking around the mall and stuff, like all the places closed, like at least by five, which is crazy because in America, literally, like everyone works until at least five, basically. So, like, I feel like businesses just can't stay open that way in America. And everyone would probably just complain because everyone just like does things later, I guess. And you guys, you guys like settle in earlier, I guess. Yeah, that is true. Cause I feel like to maybe like, parents were like my experience was like yeah we'd finish school it'd be like 3 20 and then you get ready for like training and stuff after school but like parents clock off well my dad works longer my dad my mom obviously walks shorter but by the time it's like 5 5 30 like they're cooking dinner like we're, we don't eat dinner till like a little later um but yeah like yeah. once you're at everything once like the work day's done like you're home and you're like especially in the winter time like no one wants to be out that long it's like raining and it's miserable yeah so then another food we tried, why don't you explain what an HSP is? Mm, I just so like, long story again. And obviously Australia loves to drink. <laughs> We've noticed this too. The funniest picture I have on my phone actually is, we're, all, we're 22 here, we can talk about it. It's just, it's just culture. We didn't get smashed or anything, but we went to, I took them to Dan Murphy's, which is like an alcohol place. I'm like, oh, just like get some drinks, like just ha- try some have a sip because i feel like in australia too like our range is just different um and, and i have a picture of them your alcohol is so expensive it is ridiculous yeah um, right, continue. but anyways we're going there I'm, i've got some drinks to try in my hand um where are the girls in the water section in the mixes section they were looking at sodas and water 
I was like, bloody hell, I would have just taken you to Woolies instead of Dan Murphy. <laughs> it was actually the funniest thing I've ever experienced. But anyways, a HSP. So when people go out on the town and stuff like that, there's always kebab shops. Um, so like you can get like regular like kebabs, whatever. But a HSP, it's like a thing of like fries or chips as we call them. And then they put like, you can put like kebab, like chicken or lamb on it and on top of it. And then you get like a choice of like, three sauces what people put more or less or whatever so we had chips lamb and then we put like garlic aioli sweet chili and barbecue sauce on the top and it is just like the most like guttiest like food ever but it's so good just like a pig out like and we had it we were sober we had it sober so it was delicious but just imagine that after a night out like benny's does not no offense to benny's doesn't even compare to a hsp they're very different but i would say like, even better than the hsp for me from there was just having cheese chips and gravy or whatever yeah so i feel like canadians have like what protein or whatever yeah but like we don't use cheese curds we use like shredded cheese and it's just it's like, like stock standard yeah it's like poor man's poutine but i like it better than poutine it's so good our gravy is just so good not to mention to toma- i i like it with tomato sauce they were judging me for that also <laughs> like they're their ketchup or whatever but i just need a little acidity you know yeah fair enough yeah so then okay that, that was like our first two days and then our first weekend there we got there on a thursday morning by the way okay so then saturday we go to a footy game well we walk around melbourne first um but in melbourne is the footy game and afl georgia you know, i shouldn't talk about this i actually no offense i hate explaining afl to americans because like oh it's like rugby no oh it's like soccer no, it's like it's completely own different sport. And till this day, like, I took them to two games and I'm, like, going to give them grace because, like, some of the rules, like, I get confused on. Everyone just starts yelling and you start yelling and then you don't know what's being called. Um, but, like, I just – I was, like, I'm just going to have to take them to a game and just going to have to explain, like, bits and pieces because I'm. it's not even worth it. Like, you just have to watch a game and – but we took them to – who did we watch first? Saints, which is my dad. Hawks and Saints. Um – and we actually had to leave that game early, though, because it was my mom's 50th. So we went to, like, three quarters of that game and then drove back for mom's 50th. Um, and then the next day, which was Sunday, we went to the you're gonna, Hold on. You're just going to skip over the party? Oh, I mean, it was fun. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, no, sh- I'll say from my perspective. Australians really love social drinks. Um <laughs> I think they just love any excuse, any reason to get together and have some alcohol because I have never been in an environment where there are so many people over the age. This isn't a bad thing, but over the age of like 45. Well, was ab- <laughs> I know, but I've never been in a situation where all these people are together and absolutely hammered, like falling over, like hammered. I haven't even, even in a college setting, I feel like I haven't seen people act like that. And not only are they hammered, they're not just like chilling, whatever, like they are dancing like they have so many moves it is hilarious i was just sitting the whole time because i was jet lagged. <laughs> drinks were on tab too which meant they were free so why not um but yes you throw in a bit of abba you throw in a bit of fleetwood mac the the mums and dads were going nuts <laughs> no one will be sitting they will all be feeling themselves and they get in like the little groups too and just like dance with each other it's cute yeah it, people do love a good time yeah I agree. Um, I had a good time, even though I was tired, but it was fun to <laughs> meet everyone. Liz and Kayla were getting absolutely hammered with questions. Oh, I heard Liz and Kayla. Oh my getting- God, that's the funniest thing ever. I, okay, so this- interrupting me. This is so funny though, because it's Kayla. What? what? Someone, obviously, my mom's fifty, so I don't know half the people. Like, obviously, some of them I'm obviously know so close, but some of them don't have any idea comes up to me and he's like oh I would love to meet the Yanks which we call Americans Yanks or whatever and he goes over to Liz and Kayla and he's like um oh so you guys are the Yanks and Kayla goes "Mm, I'm more of a Mets fan thanks (laughs) (laughs) I lost it because she she, that was the funniest thing of that night I'm sorry girl I'm sure that's so funny to Australians but like I had no idea that we were referred to as Yanks either that's so crazy because that's just what everyone calls you guys so, mm, no thanks i'm more of a mets fan <laughs> <laughs> the, fe- the amount of times that i heard her say that on this trip was actually hilarious what 
that, like that she was a Mets fan or whatever instead of a Yankees. And that is because every time we were shopping, like Australia has more United States sports or just like United States merch than the United States does itself, which is surprising. There's your child, Georgia. She's calling I for think, you. I think also a big thing is too, is like, we love like sports merchandise. Like if you're a part of a team in a community, like I think people really love that too. But I think the biggest thing that they found weird is that everyone has a team scarf. Yeah, wait, but I'm not done. Hold on. Because, yes, I love that everyone has a team scarf and I love that people love AFL and stuff. But why wouldn't you go to stores? Is there no, like, I was dying to get an AFL team hoodie or, like, T-shirt or something, but all there was is Chicago Bulls stuff. Like, you had so many, like, NBA stores and everything or, like, any hat store you went into, it'd be, like, all the Mitchell and that, so, like, 47, whatever, like, stuff that we have here. When I would love to get a team scarf or, like, shirt or something. But yeah, you can talk about the scarf. Sorry. No, I was just saying, like, I feel like everyone here just as a show of support, they just wear team colored scarves or like whatever. But in America, no one really does that. Like, we don't have like a hokey scarf. No. Well, also because your AFL is in the winter. Yeah. I guess. June's but I mean, like- what about football and stuff like that? Like, sometimes it's still cold in the spring. And oh, like, so- some, of these, some of these guys are wearing like t shirts and a scarf. Like, it's not even for like warmth, it's just for, for like a splash of color. I mean, I'm down. I, I've been a fan of the scarf since I found out it was a thing. If any of you listeners make scarves or know where we can get a Virginia Tech scarf, give Liz it because I obviously can't benefit from it. <laughs> Liz will happily take one. <laughs> sure. I'll take two. Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, I'm in Australia. So actually, if you send it to my home address, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, we also, the next day after that, we actually have a lot to talk about. We went to a Mexican place in Australia, which is what we found out very different than American Mexican. Um, Explain what you guys do for, like, Mexican. Um, I feel like when we go to Mexican, it's not like I can't get an ACP. Like, I can't get a burrito. I can't get, uh, like, plate of fajitas unless I'm going to, like, some chain. Like, but, like, we went to, like, a fancy Mexican place. It was, like, a... In the um, like in the lane, and like there's like four things on the menu. It was like enchiladas. Yeah, like, well, I feel, like, I feel like that's like your version of like sit down because they have like hardly any sit down restaurants. Like we said, they like to be on the go. Like we'll get to this later, but like there's very minimal restaurants that we found where you like sit down and somebody like waits on you. I feel like it's either like really really nice or like grab and go. So, like, we, they don't have, like, um, L-Rods where you, like, sit down and just order whatever you want and then whatever. Like, there's no... Do you guys even have, like, refried beans like that? Um, Not like that. No, I don't know. But, like, another thing with that, too, is, like, we actually got, like, waited on. Because, like, our waiters are on salaries. Like, they don't go off tips. So, like, a lot of the places, they'll, like, sit, sit you down and then, like, maybe they'll collect plates, but they're not over here talking, making conversation. Like, you'll go up to the counter and you'll order and you'll pay out the counter and go back and sit. Like, you do your own job. Because <laughs> they're not desperate for tips. Well, I mean, I'm sure a tip helps, but it's not like it's their source of income. No, I, when I got my I got my eyelashes tinted over there and, like, we tip for, like, beauty services and everything, like, haircuts and nails and all that stuff. Um, and then I, like, told her the person that did my eyelashes and she was like oh no like I think I'd get more offended if I got tipped and I was like that is the craziest and most amazing thing I've ever heard in my life because I saved 10 bucks Mm -hmm. 10 US bucks Mm -hmm. (sighs) okay what next Ooh, we also went to Yochi we're literally I'm literally just talking about food I want dessert right now so it's like influencing me um I think it's a very vital part oh no Oh, yeah, we went to the netball and Clara came. And then we got your Yoshiyanda. Yep, yep, skipped over the netball. Netball is, again, I shouldn't talk about this, Georgia. Netball is, well, I think obviously a lot of the Commonwealth countries play it. Um, But it's like seven girls on each team on the court. You have positions, like you can't dribble, you have to pass. But it's like so good. Like as much as I hated playing netball, I think it was so good in developing number one my footwork but number two my passing because it's not like you can just dribble and whatever like you have and you can only hold the ball for three seconds so like you have to like pass on the lead you have to like get good passes you have to like 
constantly be moving um so it's just it's like different than basketball obviously but it's like if i was like liz i'd be very much considering playing the biggest difference is when you catch the ball and you're about to shoot they literally can't um when he's going absolutely nuts they're actually fighting in my room right now i <laughs> This suddenly I have ADHD because I can't handle when they're playing tug of war. <laughs> I just exposed my mess of a room. Also, can you hear them? Yeah, a little bit, but let's continue about your catch it in the goal square. Sorry, what was I talking about? Um, in the goal when they catch the ball in the goal. In oh the goal. yeah, when the netball players catch the ball, mom. <laughs> Please help me! They're playing tug of war in my room. Tug and wool. Tug of war. Cause I love my room. Just shut it, please. <laughs> okay, we'll remember that time. Um, when so they're playing deep in the goal. So the biggest difference between basketball and netball is like when the girls that are, that shoot or whatever, or like there's a couple, only a couple of people can shoot. And then when they catch the ball to shoot, the defense like can't, like they step away instead of like. You have to give them three feet of space. Yeah, which is crazy. And then they like just hold, they straighten their arm, hold the ball as high as they can. And they just do. That's Four all. Shot. Yeah. Well. We'll see. I think I'd be terrible at it, but probably just because I've never played before. So you wouldn't get beat up and double teamed. Yeah, you do need to be like, um, you like post up a lot. Like they like push the people out a lot. But a lot. Yeah. Um. Okay. What do we do next? Let's see. Oh, we went to Melbourne again. Yeah. 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 Melbourne Hill in Ballarat. We did go to Sovereign Hill. Oh, yeah. If anybody, like, I feel like there's a few places around America, like, that have those, like, old-timey towns where, like, people reenact stuff. It's mm -hmm. like a like a preserved village or whatever from 1700s or 1800s or whatever. So we went to one in Georgia's hometown. Um, My hometown was, like, a mining town. It was huge, like, during the gold rush and all of that. Um, and, like, people just not make fun of it, but, like, Ballarat's known for Sovereign Hill because they have, like, raspberry drops and all of that. Um, but we went there, we went in a mine, um, saw how raspberry drops got made. You skipped over the mine part. We rode a, we rode a thing down a mine, like a, I don't know what they're called. We, like, a, trolley. a trolley. Yeah, yeah, that's cute. That's a cute name. Um, and we get out, we do the tour, whatever, whatever. And then we get back to the starting point where the trolley is supposed to like pick us up and it wasn't coming. And the guy was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know where it is. And I thought it was a bit. I was like, oh, my God, this is hilarious. Turns out it wasn't. Like, we looked on the security cameras. Like, there was nothing coming for us. And I got a little scared. <laughs> there would have been a security exit somewhere. We're, okay. That's reassuring for next time. Um, but one eventually came for us. And we were fine. And it was actually really cool. Um, we bought rings there. We bought, like, some food and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. What else did we do it? And then we went for a barbecue, I think, at Lisa and TJ, my auntie and uncle's house. Yeah, that was delicious. Um, back to the sweet potato thing. They had, like, a sweet potato salad with balsamic, and that was delicious. And they eat, like, steak. Do you eat that a lot, you'd say? or? Um, yeah, I mean, I personally don't because I just don't really like big pieces of meat like that. Like, I just wouldn't know how to steak. Mm. But sausages, all of that, yeah. Well, we had an Australian barbecue, and that was – surely fun i enjoyed that and then the next day we did something really cool which was go to geelong mm. um, which is like i don't know explain geelong so my nan and pa are huge geelong football supporters so it's like it's like if we if liz took me to like the carolina panthers and like took them around like the facilities and met the coaches and all of that like we did that so we went to geelong Saw them, saw their facility, like their practice, their gym, met the women's side coach and recruiting staff. And um, then we watched some of their training. We weren't really watching because we were just talking the whole time with a bunch of people, but it was still cool to like go out there and see what they do. And then we came inside and just absolutely rampaged through the shop. <laughs> uh, oh, I thought you were going to say rampage through the cafe because I did that first. I was. Yeah. 
Yeah. I forget, like, honestly, like, I forget to eat sometimes. So, like, it was, like, 11 a.m. and I hadn't eat. I've had coffees and stuff like that. But, like, because we drove down and stuff, I just forgot to eat. Like, if something else is on my mind, I'm just – I have to get that done. So, the girls were, like, dizzy, starving. We are so different in that way because, like, all – I can't stop myself from thinking about food. There's nothing I can do about it. It's on my mind constantly. Especially if I'm hungry, I cannot function. Like, yeah. Georgia will literally, like, will wake up and will go to work out, and she will work out on an empty stomach. And if I did that, I would literally need to lay on the floor. Like, I can't do that. I, like – I'm so inconsistent with it. Like, sometimes I – it just depends on how I feel when I wake up, number one. Like, if I'm hungry, I'll obviously eat. But, like, if I'm just, like, so ready to just get stuff over and done with, I'm just – focused on that oh i just don't have that option i'm glad you don't feel sick though but i literally feel sick i've had times where like i definitely feel like i'm being affected by it but okay um we also went to drag bingo which was fun um (laughs) but unfortunately what doors opened at six but when we were planning to get picked up at like seven little did we know that it started at seven and it went till 9 30 yeah but like another part of the story is that number one we were having thai food for dinner at home but number two we had to wake up at 4 a.m to go to palm cove the next day so that's why we wanted to leave the drag bingo early but we ended up staying till like eight yeah. kayla won a prize yeah we were just confused but it didn't matter because as soon as kayla won we were like all right our luck's run up let's get out of here yeah <laughs> so we went back and devoured thai food and started packing our bags yeah, and of course, what Kayla won was a gigantic slab of chocolate, so we ate that in the car on the way home to eat our Thai food. Yeah, they these guys, like, rampaged through chocolate. I was going to say that after the Thai food, we ate more chocolate, because that was our nighttime routine. Good here. Like, you buy a block and, oh. Also, I have another funny story. So, like, you know, um, you know, like, in that fridge, how we put it in that section? That little area in our fridge. Yeah, that little yeah. shelf. So that, that's always been our chocolate shelf. Like we've always had chocolate there or whatever. But I think Kayla and Gemma were sitting in the kitchen and Toby comes in and he's like going to take a block off the chocolate and Kayla's going, oh, that's actually where we keep our chocolate. And Toby's like, okay. And then just, like he didn't connect that like it was like what you bought, but like that's our chocolate section. So like whatever's in there, that's a free for all. Like yeah, that's... Like- that makes a lot of sense because Kayla also made a comment to me. She was like, oh, I think we made that that drawer the official chocolate drawer. No, that's always been our chocolate drawer. So Gemma, like, that's like when you guys left, that's what Gemma told me. She was like, that's the funniest thing. Because Gemma was like, I was just sitting here watching it unfold because Toby's gone and taking blocks off. And he's like, okay. Like Kayla's like, that's where we keep our chocolate. And Kayla's like, and Toby's like, okay. She was like, <laughs> she didn't want to eat. I or- get, well, I'm not sure just making a comment about it or not, but like, that's always been where we've kept it. Yeah, like, no, I understand that now. And that makes a lot of sense because uh, we would be gone for the day. Mind you, we'd buy like a couple chocolate bars every other day. We'd eat some and then put it in the drawer. And then the next time I looked, there would be none left. Yeah. So I, I knew that it was obvious that people knew where chocolate was found because they yeah. found it. Even like, but like when we bought honeycomb and stuff like that, well, my mom bought honeycomb and stuff like that. She puts it up there too. Yeah. I have no problem sharing. You did house me for two and a half weeks. So no, I'm I'm just saying it's funny. Like Toby, like that's his cho- like that's the chocolate drawer. That's where you find it. So if it's in there, take it. And Toby's just like, okay, like he didn't have to care what Kayla had to say. Like, <laughs> can somebody edit a compilation of every time you're going, okay, because you've done that. <laughs> it's so funny. It's the fact that Toby doesn't actually sound like that. No, he does though. Like he's oh. just so like what you want. He's like. All right. No, he'd be like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> he, he must have been so confused, like just breaking up with me, like, like it's there. <laughs> no, Toby's hilarious. I'm so glad that. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm embarrassed to think of him listening. Not that he would listen to this. He doesn't listen to these. Does nah, he? he would. Yeah. Okay. That's all right then. Toby, love ya. He'll never know. <laughs> um. So yeah. Then the next morning we left and went to Palm Cove, but maybe we should save that for next time i don't know and you want to get into it because we have a few more segments to do so we'll save palm co for next time we went to the beach but we'll tell you more stories later huh yeah. that's a crocodile farm all yeah that. 
yeah there's a lot we did a lot up there so stay tuned um but next segment is roommate report card and roommate report card is brought to you by 310 rosemont if you're looking for some awesome apparel get 15 percent off by mentioning queens of castle it's located on main street in blacksburg um they have swimsuits uh shoes summer clothes everything you need for the new season um so yeah roommate report card georgia how was i as a house guest in your child at home we were well, this is not my childhood term, but I knew you were gonna say that. I I'm <laughs> being loose with the term. Um, we weren't even here, really. So, I mean, fine. Like there was no issues or anything like that. Like, why did we have this as a segment? Every single time you go, I got nothing. Every no, time. No, I don't have nothing. I'm just saying we barely stayed here because we were always in Melbourne, like staying at other people's houses or like. Palm okay. Curve. We, like, we probably stayed there at least seven nights, though. I will give you an A plus because you kept buying chocolate. <laughs> Even if it wasn't intended to be eaten all in one go by my whole family, you still bought a lot of chocolate. That was my rent. I was handing over those chocolate bars like dollar bills. Yeah, 100%. So I would give you an A plus for that. Okay. And then me, you as a host, um, your whole family gets an A plus. I would say I loved that there was always like a real fire going Mm. because I feel like that's not as, I don't know. I haven't encountered as many of those. Like uh, your dad is literally out there chopping wood and putting it in the fire, which is bare feet. It is bare feet. Can you imagine? God makes me nervous, Um, (laughs) but that was really cool. And then your mom cooks so well, your dad too. So that was lovely. There's my British accent. (laughs) I've been watching. The Great British Bake Off, like nobody's, or baking show. I keep calling it the wrong thing. That's so embarrassing because I'm such a big fan. But that's like Oh, I've started Ted Lasso. I love it. I said that actually because I wanted to start the ball rolling and you, because I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, no, I love Ted Lasso. I love it so much because they're just, their humor is just obviously our humor. Like the swearing and what? Why are you making that face? I was, I was just curious, obviously. Oh, like the swearing and stuff like that. And then like, just like how people are just honest with each other. But like in a sports sense too, like it's just like, it's very interesting. I love it. So relatable to you. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen 30 minutes. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to have conversation. I don't actually know anything. I know, I've watched only a couple of episodes with my family, but it's just really going to be a comfort show for me. Yeah, and that's okay. that a lot coming from Georgia, considering she doesn't watch television. Yeah, it's huge. Which is such a shame, because one of my favorite things to do is sit on the couch and stare at the television, but Georgia doesn't want to do it with me. Nope. She wants to instead sit on the couch and stare at her phone, because for some reason that does it for her. Because that's just constant stimulation. I'm in control. So I like playing video games. <laughs> it's a control thing. No, I just can, like, if I'm bored, like, I can go into another app or I can watch a video or I can, sh- like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can oh, just jump around. Yeah, no, no. Um, okay, next segment is Song of the Week, which is brought to you by Hokey House. Head down to Hokey House to listen to some great music and have some great food. There's a jukebox on the second floor, so go play your Song of the Week or our Songs of the Week. I have a good one this week. Georgia, do you want to go first, though? We also forgot to say that we went to a concert in Punk Curve, but whatever. So, obviously, we went to that concert, so I've been listening to a lot of their music. We're saving that. We're saving Punk Curve for next week. But I have a... Um, so, like, when I went home, I just, like, making playlists of all the music because it's different. Like, mm-hmm. even on... I know this is, like, so, like, 20... 2020 of me to say like a lot of the songs on tiktok trending and stuff like that it's different in australia than it is america yeah. so it's like, like all the songs that are like popular here might be different also we're just like not into like i don't say where like a lot of like my friends or, like my family and stuff like just aren't really big into like rap like that like america is so it's just like very different very different um music so i like i just have like a whole playlist of songs but recently i've been listening to Little Things by Georgia Smith. Um, what else? Love Fool by the Cardigans. Oh, I love that song. But like, I just have like a whole playlist of like stuff that I've been listening to while I've been at home. Yeah, um, this just struck a thought when you said that people don't listen to rap because all I was taken aback to is being in your car in Australia and having Central C play constantly. 
over and over. <laughs> yeah, but that's like the like we don't listen like Lil Durk. Well, okay. some of them might, but our family doesn't. You say Lil Durk like it's like so much it's more. Not bad thing. I it's know. Not but a bad thing. You oh, say but like, you're, your trending artists are different than our trending artists. Is Central C trending? I think it's. <laughs> He's a new. He's got a new album out. That's why I was listening to it. Can you guys? Do you enjoy the way it sounds? Yeah, I think it's like. I think it's funny. Like I think it's funny to listen to. Hmm. If you got, you guys need to go. Please go listen to Central C. Central, how you would think, and then C E E. <laughs> it is just funny. I I don't know how else to describe it to me. Yeah, but apparently it's good music. Um. Mm-hmm. Whatever, whatever you enjoy. Uh, I've been listening to Rule a lot lately. Um, his fourth wall album, uh, because he's on tour and he was in Washington, like the night I got back from Australia, and I almost drove there to see, but I decided that it probably wouldn't be great because I'd probably be in a terrible mood and have no sleep like right now. So nobody wants to be with me when I'm like that. Um, but the album's really good and it's really fun to sing. But I like the sad songs the best, of course. Another another area that me and Georgia differ in. Kind of get around that. Sometimes we're in the car and she's playing all these depresso music. I'm like, sh- shock. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? My whole mood's changed. <laughs> I just get like, I'm just like a very emotional person, I think. Whereas Georgia. <laughs> Georgia, I don't like emotions. I hate emotions. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the opposite. I just lo- like if I'm bored, like I just want to feel something. Like just make me feel something. So why would you want to feel sad? But I don't. I, it's not necessarily feeling sad. It's just feeling something. Mm. You don't get. I mean, the girls that get it get it. I get bored. I put on house music and I blast my speaker and I feel something from that. I don't put on Adele and cry. But I I don't cry. I just sit there in thought. Like I I can't sit there in thought when house music is going. Like, yeah. Go ahead. No. Go on. I was done. That's why I like house music because I don't have to think. It's just repetitive. It puts you in a psychosis. It's just constant. (laughs) We are just wired so incredibly differently. So different. Like I love to think. Like all the time, I'll look at Georgia. I'll be like, "What are you thinking about?" And she'll be thinking. She's only only always ever thinking about like. Super, not, not super cool or like shopping or like, yeah. she's not, like shell stuff. Yeah, not superficial in a bad way, but just like immediate things. Like she's never like contemplating like life or like religion or anything like that. And that is like always on my mind. <laughs> oh. So we have great what conversations. Was what was it? I was, I think I was just like spaced out. And this is like, what's up? I'm like just thinking about sunscreen on my moles. <laughs> No, completely wrong context, but funny. Yes, um, we were talking about uh, we were about to like all go to bed. We we're about to all go to sleep, and we we're talking about our to do list for tomorrow. And Georgia starts rattling off. She's like, oh, "I'm gonna get up and go and run. I'm gonna make breakfast. I'm gonna put sunscreen on my moles." Like d- dead serious, so serious. And it took me by surprise. I was like, <gasps> "I'm glad you're remembering, though." I just I have to lay it out. Otherwise, not not that I'm gonna forget, but I just laying out like stuff that I'm gonna do. And as you said, it's not really like anything that's deep. It's just like this is what I'm gonna do. Like that's what I'm thinking about. Like I I think you were just in a little bit of a goofy mood because you kind of burst out into laughter after that. Because <laughs> I sound like an idiot. Like usually if I keep it in my head, I'm not laughing at it. But as soon as it comes out of my gob, I'm like that's actually the dumbest thing I've said in a while. No, but it was really smart of you. That's a really good decision you made. I am. Yeah, we were we did use sunscreen very well, I would say. Yeah, until the last day where you were like, because it did it is winter, so yeah, it did like we were up there for like six days and it did rain like three of the six days. But like when the sun came out on the last day and we had to leave, it was like trying to absorb water when you're in the desert. Like it was just like frying. <laughs> Your belly's got burnt. My belly did get burnt, but now it's just really tan. Like it's so tan. Yeah. But it's really only my belly. I guess my belly is really close to the sun. That's concerning. Your belly? Yeah. Like, why did that get so burnt but nothing else? When I'm like... Probably because you lay and you have a book in front of your face. And a t-shirt on your head. (laughs) Yeah, but what about my legs? God, I don't know. Maybe put sunscreen on them. I don't know. It's okay. I do have a book. It does... 
my book always keeps my chest from getting evenly tanned. Nobody cares about this. Let's just end this. <laughs> now I'm just blabbling. <laughs> blabbling. Yeah. I've been blabbling. I'm so delusional this entire time. Did I already mention I've been up since 4 a.m.? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm in like a con I'm in like a um split decision right now. Cause I was gonna wake up and go and do some running and some lifting, but then I'm like now it's like 12, it's almost lunchtime. But I was going to go tonight anyways to Gemma's training and just shoot because at least I have a rebounder. So maybe I'll just do that. I can't, can't decide if I want to do two workouts or one today. One long one. Are you, I want to... one. Are you bragging right now? No, I'm, this is, I'm telling you, this is the stuff I think about that's on my mind. Uh, do you have homework to do? Maybe we should yeah. hang up and talk about this later. I have a lot of homework to do. <laughs> do people like when we just talk like this? I don't know. Probably because they're like eavesdropping. <laughs> <laughs> it is like eavesdropping. I've never eavesdropped more than I did on those like 30 hour travel days. Like airports, <laughs> airplanes, great to eavesdrop. I'd be reading people's texts. You're lying if you say you don't. But then like even just when you're in an airport, like there's just such different demographics of people. Like you don't know why they're traveling. You don't know where to. You don't know how much, you know, like sad happy excitement are you leaving your family are you meeting your family did you just break up with your husband are you leaving? like you know what i'm saying like there's just crazy stuff that happens well, do you know so this is a good question for you since you don't traditionally think very deep <laughs> i don't mean that in a bad way um so when you see people do you like ever just make up life stories for them or no um one time <laughs> i was in an uber and i told the guy that i was in the australian open playing tennis i didn't mean literally i meant like in your head <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> i usually do it to people and i don't do it in my head yeah that's actually not what i was talking about at all. <laughs> i meant like if you see someone and then in your head you're like oh like they have three kids oh, with the no. Dog, no okay no so there's some guy out there that drove me in an uber that purely thinks that i was in the australian open and he drove a tennis player I bet he watched the final four and he was like, oh my god, that looks so much like that famous tennis player. <laughs> no. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Yeah. All right. Anyway, well, we'll be back in a week anyway, so. Yeah. Can't wait to see ya. Well, I guess by the time I'm back, we can do the podcast together again. For when the you... first ages. No. You don't come back for like 11 days. Mm-mm. Mm, 25th? 23rd. Sugar. Wait. I'm confused. I leave on the 23rd. I land on the 23rd. Oh, you leave from Sydney on the 23rd? Yeah. Not to Sydney? Oh, okay. No, I leave to Sydney. Oh, yeah. So I, because I'm playing with Gemma, because Gemma's coming over for tournaments. So if you guys are in Indianapolis or Louisville, go and watch Gemma. Um, but. Oh. She, we leave for Sydney on the 22nd and then we're spending a night there with mom and Toby and then Gemma and I leave the next day on the same flight. Cute. And then say our goodbyes at LA and then I go to straight to Charlotte. Well, well, perhaps we will um, be together next time then. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. um, until then, I don't know where the last 40 minutes went. <laughs> yeah. I, I would keep talking about Australia and stuff like that because it's actually hilarious. So. Well, I have so much more to say, but we'll just save it for... Because I made a list. Preview. You know how Georgia has her weird things about America list or whatever. I made a weird things about Australia list. And there's plenty on there. Mm -hmm. So we'll dive into that later. Um, mm -hmm. But until then, I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Georgia? I'm ready to eat. Yeah, we're at very different stages right now. What? Yeah. And start my day. Yeah, okay, sorry. I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Liz. I'm Georgia. And we're... Queens of Castle. <laughs>